gonna mug me. I'm not gonna mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the Peace and Marathon. Download Veely now. On Salvage Hunters, Drew and T are entertained at a warehouse in York. Hey, you are. Hey, you are. Is it me? Is that the new look? Yeah. But will there be anything to buy? That mill trolley's pretty funky, isn't it? I buy that for 60. I, I'd like more than that. 75. I'd still like more 85. than that. 85. Nope. At a specialist garage in Cambridgeshire, Voila. Drew finds the car of his dreams. That's the car I wanted when I was 18. But can he afford to drive it away? And at an antiques dealer in Suffolk... That. ..he spots an unusual model castle. It is cork, yeah. But is the asking price too high? It's worth 650. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's an absolute gem. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Look at that statue there. It's over 2,000 years old. No. In his hunt for treasure... No, nope, I'm going to keep those. ..everything has its price. I'll give you 500 pounds for them. Yeah, I'll take that. And there's nothing he won't buy. <laughs> you wouldn't buy that, would you? Just watch, just watch us. With help from his wife, Rebecca... You do what you do, and I'll do the selling here, then. ..and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. <laughs> At Drew Pritchard's architectural salvage showroom in Conwy, North Wales, the team is working hard. Uh, Larry, today, can we do this door porter? And Drew is off to investigate a massive new location that could turn up some great pieces. It's a two and a half hour drive northeast to the ancient city of York. First founded by the Romans in 71 AD, the city is home to York Minster, the largest Gothic church of its kind in the UK. It's also known for something a little more decadent. Yeah, what's York famous for? Uh, uh, chocolate, I think. Round trees. Really? Yeah. So, uh, why would they make chocolate up here? Uh, this is where the chocolate mine is. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, every now and, and then, then they, they strike a hot vein, and you can hear them screaming. <laughs> We've got a gusher. <laughs> but Drew's sweet tooth is not the motivation for this trip. We're off to see a guy called Robert Reedman. My name's Robert Reedman, and we're at um, my storage facility for scenery and props, um, which used to be an old chicken farm. In fact, Robert has been hoarding and building up his personal collection of theatrical props in these chicken sheds for almost a decade. Uh, this right. is it. Well, that's quite a chicken shed. It is. Hello. Hello. Rob. Good to meet you. How are you doing? All right, Rob. Hi. Nice to meet you. Well, thanks Thank for having us here. No problem. So, uh, all of this stuff, all of these sheds full of props? They are full of a um, mixture of props, furniture, costumes, scenery, and my personal belongings as well from the past. <laughs> Blimey, you've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> which, one's, which one are we going to have a go at first? Let's have a look in the um, clean one. The clean one? This seems pretty clean already. <laughs> I come in this shed through. Here is normally the tidy section. Blimey, how big are these sheds? These are huge. Yeah, they go on forever. Look, just oh, all the way down, look. You need one of these. As far as the... So wow. if you want a suit jacket, I can fit you out. <laughs> I'll good. tell you who does need sorting out. Yes, well... well elegant he is not. I am. We've, this is an imp we've improved 44 him. short. <laughs> and round. <laughs> yeah. Rough sophistication, yeah, yeah. this is. Yeah. Rough sophistication. Double-breasted needed, I feel. <laughs> sure, so this yes. is costumes. This is costumes, uh, small hats and, obviously, um, accessories, and any particular piece of furniture that I don't want raining on or leak, so... <laughs> <laughs> and so you've, that means you've got furniture you do want raining on? Um, I have furniture that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I've got some of that too. <laughs> that if it happens to get trashed, it's not the end of the world. Really? So, but that's an old Roundtree skip from the Roundtree's factory. Yeah, I like that. That's it's nice. Roundtree's and Company on the front. York, yeah. that's it. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we've used that on stage a few times. And that came from the actual 
the loft in the theatre years ago. You used to store costumes for Roundtree Youth. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a Susical hat. That'll suit you. <laughs> a what? Dr. Zeus hat. Red, no! Red, white, straight, full, oh, full on, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Why don't you try it off? Please try that on TV. Yes. It was a cold, cold day. I read them all to my kids. I absolutely love them. Oh, here we go. There's that. There's some... the, the seams. No, the not me. You can put no. it on. There you are. There you are. <laughs> is it me? Is that the new look? Yeah. Do you know what? That's it's quite cosy good. looking. Is it? Yeah. 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 I like yeah. it. It's a good look for you. How much is it? <laughs> if I can buy that. If he wears it one day, we'll buy it. <laughs> So head through to this area, which is um, the work area where normally the sewing and costumes are made and drapes are made. But Whoa. oops, that's a uh, used to be hanging in my kitchen about 20 years ago. It's an American um, dryer for small items of clothing, <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like the, the, looks like the Statue of Liberty. Statue yeah. of Liberty. <laughs> Perfect. I've never seen this amount items so clean so well laid out anyway so very hopeful of finding something here today because there's somebody who knows what something should look like and why absolutely Blimey. filled it quite like that so, where do you get this from that would have just come in a box of bits i have no idea it has no history to me yeah it's just arrived in some um vein would you sell it um yeah absolutely what do you want for it um I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. I'm very bad with kind of true value of things. OK. Because I, 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 I look at them in terms of an object to use on a set. So yeah, I yeah, yeah. Of, I, like I, say, I for, think very differently. For me, that design-wise, that's great, isn't it? So interesting. Look, it can be a stand-up light or it just locks itself there as well. Very clever, and you can lock it that way as well. This Pithco desk lamp dates back to the 1950s and has an unusual black lacquer finish. With rewiring and cleaning, it could fetch around £300. I've, I've had thousands of desk lamps. I've never seen that one. It's beautifully engineered. It's articulated on three sections, but it articulates and locks in position. Unusual. Then they've enamelled the interior of the lamp, nickel-plated the outside. Not seen one. Super stylish. Very cool. Um. Ooh. 50 quid? That's fine by me. Of course, sir. Yeah. I really want it. Yeah. Usually I'd pay like 25 quid for it, 30 quid. It, it's a bit it, riff, but it's such a nice original example. Like that. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Crack on, that's a great start. Well pleased with that. It's the first thing I bought, so, you know, I'm paying the right money, because I've just got a good feeling about the place. Next, Robert takes them to the back of the shed, where he stores his endless collection of costumes. It's clothes, clothes, clothes at the moment. OK. So there are even my own clothes mixed in. <laughs> I'm never short of something Look to find to wear. That. Oh, my tea. I found your new shorts. <laughs> Check <laughs> them out. Look, you'd, you'd never find me if I I think that's one. for one leg. <laughs> 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 I'm only here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's difficult to describe what was stood inside. Robert's just been chucking stuff in here for years from bits of props to umbrellas to trumpets and playing cards. It's a real odd mix. Step across, yeah. yeah. Are we, am I following you? Yeah? Yeah. <sighs> but I keep yes. seeing these. How many have you got of these? These racks? Um, they're, well, they're, just, they're spread out down this side. I, they came from... York in the factory. Um, they were the... A clothing factory? Yes. No, no, a chocolate factory. So these were just for the workers to put their stuff on? Yes, and it was the posh part of it, so I presume that it's slightly <laughs> posher than the... the poor... Sorry, don't trip over anything. No, we'll... don't <laughs> worry. I walked past this clothes rail and I thought, oh, that's nice. And I was just not thinking straight. And it, it took me to walk all the way around it once before I went, God, that's actually quite good, isn't it? Um, had a better look at it. It's nickel-plated. That gives it a nice bit of age. Mahogany top. These 1950s coat racks were used in the Roundtree's chocolate factory in York before it was taken over in the 1980s. With very little restoration, they could sell for around £1,000 each. 
those are desirable and they're cool. And if they were half size, I'd bought one in my house. I mean, they're really cool. Where do you want to be? I'd like to buy them all. I've got two questions. Right. Number one is what do you want for it? And number two is how that on earth do we get them out? <laughs> well, if you'd like to pay for an entrance at that end of the shed easily. <laughs> have, you got, have, you got a, have you got a chainsaw? <laughs> <laughs> we can walk off. it up to the railway line and carry it down the railway line. Um, well, I certainly, because I actually, as you've seen, I've got a figure in mind, but you okay. sort of tell me what you think. Um, well, in order, if I went out hunting to buy them, yeah. then I would have been into five, six hundred pounds. A salvager, Drew Pritchard, is rummaging through Robert Reedman's collection of theatrical props in York. But I keep yes. seeing these. He's just spotted some antique coke racks, but is Robert willing to part with them? The figure I had in my head was, honestly, I wish I'd written that down. <laughs> 600 quid. That's fine by me. Mm. That's absolutely fine. Brilliant, thank you. I'm so glad I saved them. They're worth that to me. Yes. They're worth that. Might not be worth that to most people, but to me they are. I think they're, they've got a really interesting look to them. Can't wait to see them out. Perfect. Made the day. Very, very good item that I won't be around long. Literally days. They'll be gone in days. Right, we'll have a look in the other one. There's still plenty more to explore. Just mind the, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right into the scenery shed. The wood, panels of wood. There's so much stuff. That's the cornfield. What's, what's this from? <laughs> well, it was. We wanted um, a ground row for a show called 13, and this was at the workshop where I was in of mice and men. And a friend of mine who works there got us a contact, and instead of three pieces, I got 30. Do you want to buy a field? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to buy a full field of corn. <laughs> Absolutely. Scenery side is just the front bit, and then furniture and anything that might remotely be used um, will be yeah. on the other side. That mill trolley's pretty funky, isn't it? Um, Something you want to get rid of, or? Yeah. yeah? I, I was, I was going to use it in Annie, but I do have the one next door, the Round Trees one, which I could use. I'll fancy that one as well. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, um... I've got a load of them. I don't, need to, I don't really need any more, but I just like the wheels on this one. It, it, and it, it, believe it or not, even though they're flat, straight wheels, it turns really easily. Yeah. It's, it's built in a way that the wheels have some um, movement in them. So yeah, I, I think pull... what they call it is loose. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this wicker trolley with original cast iron wheels dates back to the 1860s. With cleaning and repair to the frame, it could fetch about 500 pounds. I see. OK, what do you want for that one? Um, oh, I'd be fine with 40, 50 quid. Well, OK. Um, yeah, 50 quid. Yes, done. I love that. Are you interested in the other round trees one? Because I, I, I do need yes, one for the show. you do. Well, I can find another one, but if you, if you want to... I'd buy the same for the one next door for 60. I, I'd like more than that. 75. No, I'd still like more 85. than 85. Nope. Ninety pounds. Um, go up to the hundred. Ninety-five and it's yours. pounds. Ninety-nine pounds. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yes. Hundred quid. There you done. Go. Yep, done. Yeah, done. I love it. That's a bit of bartering. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't bartered much yet. That's like... We've had a, a little bit of a bargain. We bought one for fifty pounds, but it is filthy. So that cheap price now will relate to four or five hours of Gavin's time cleaning and polishing it and making it sort of stand up straight and you know look the part, because that'll end up in somebody's house. Um, as a log basket, so um, that's where they all go. Cool. Oh. We've got a bit of loading to do, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Proper removals men now. This is our removal men dress in the cinema. <laughs> I've no chance we can <laughs> offer you this service. <laughs> the glasses are a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delighted to see you in your real job. You like it? I, well, I think it's great, and <laughs> that's a, just a touch tight. But where, where, where is it tight? Where? And, uh, well, it's where, where it is it tight? It's down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After three drinks. Hey! hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we can do a bring me sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> right, 
right? Yeah. I certainly have enjoyed it thoroughly, and I've sold some items, so that's great. I've made some money. Um, lots of the objects I'd actually forgotten were in the sheds, and it's a case of, oh, it, it, you're interested in that? Cool. Find a little bit of bounce. <laughs> that's it, that's it. You know, that's it. Lovely. <laughs> yes, we choreograph a whole routine. You can have your costumes back now. Thank you. Robert definitely owns the most sort of glamorous poultry coops in the world. It's uh, it's amazing. It really is. I'm astounded. Just the level of stuff. We've had it. It was a yeah. pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Enjoy, Riot. Thank, Thank you, you for very coming. Well. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Have a safe journey home. Thank you. Right then. Sit the road. Shame you couldn't keep your hat. <laughs> Do you think it was me? It was you. You suited it. You did. I always said I'm a bowler hat type. Of you guy. are a bowler hat type of person. Well, how was that for you? Surprisingly good. I didn't expect that at all. Got on. Great. Safely driven back to Conway, Drew has plenty to show Rebecca and the team. Hello. You're right. Went to a guy, see a guy called Robert Reedman. We got mill trolleys at the top, at the top there by T's hand. Okay. So just do a normal job on it, Gavin. Good. 50, 50 quid. It's cheap. It's cheap, but it's tired. It's well, tired. Can tighten that up. Yeah, this one is oh, the this best is a good one, one I've ever had. This is a really good one. Brass. Yeah. Look at the handles. That's a lovely, and the underside, lovely, lovely, lovely. Look at those it's inset caster. It's not rotten. That's really nice. That was a hundred quid. Oh, that's like, that's that's lovely, really isn't it? Nice. The best of the baskets was the second one, and it's got R and something on the side, round trees. Um, beautifully done. Lovely leather straps. Uh, I've got my eye on that one actually. So these came out of. Right. Yeah. These came out of the Round Trees factory. And then I saw those big changing room racks. They're just fantastic. I mean, they're sort of iconic looking pieces, which is very simple, but really appealing to the eye. Definitely retail, without a shadow of a doubt. These are um, yeah. not hanging around. No. no. Not hanging around. Uh -huh. That's like uh -huh. one of mine. That's terrible. <laughs> not a bad day. So let's get it all in. Let's get it set up. We'll photograph that thing now. Drew and T are back on the road. This time, Drew's on a personal mission to buy something he's been after for many years. It's a 240 mile drive southeast to the village of Burwell, a small rural community just outside of Cambridge. Drew's meeting an old acquaintance and he's hoping to drive away with a big purchase. Yeah, we're heading to see a guy I haven't seen in 21 years. He'd been avoiding you. <laughs> he, uh, he's a guy called Paul Medhurst, and when I was into the Volkswagen scene, and like really into the Volkswagen scene, totally immersed in it, um, Paul was a bit of a star of the show. He worked for a very well-known Volkswagen uh, restoration specialist and then set up on himself. And my name is Paul, Paul Medhurst. Um, I run a company called Type 2 Detectives. We're not detective agents. We are actually a Volkswagen specialist. Type 2 is the uh, Volkswagen name for the Volkswagen camper. Type 1 being the Beetle. So these are hard things to locate, so we like to think ourselves as a little bit of a detective. And um, we really enjoy what we do. We're going on, basically, I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. He's got some stuff for sale, right? But what he also has is a car I've wanted since I was 19 years old. And now we hit, hit the real reason for our journey down here. He's got my dream Volkswagen, the one I've always wanted. Here we go, the place. T2D. Wow. Volkswagen heaven. It is. Oh, yeah, 
Paul, Good hello again. Hello, Drew. How are you doing? Yeah, long time no see. At least 20 years. I think so, yeah. Hi, Hi I'm Paul. Paul. How, are you doing? How are you doing? This is Mark. Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. How are you? Briefly. Pleased to meet you. Thank you. Hi, Hi pleased to meet you. How are you doing? Yeah. You've come to have a look at this car we've located for you then. Yep. Do you want to have a look? Can't wait. I can sort of see it. <laughs> Follow me. Out the corner of my eye. Voila. Cool. It's just like Christmas for you, isn't it? It is. That's the car I wanted when I was 18. Today I am fulfilling a very long-held dream, and it's... Uh, it's over there, and it's a black and shiny one, and it's uh, a 56 oval sunroof with a red interior. It was, I was actually fairly emotional when I saw the car because it literally is that, it's such a long held dream for me to have one. They mean a lot to me and the design, which is everything to me in my whole life, I've lived for the design, is perfect. I think it's the best shape they ever made. Yeah. What I'd really like to do now, can we go for a ride? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. jump in. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I've waited 20 years for this. Fantastic, enjoy it. <laughs> so when was the last time you drove a Nickel Volkswagen then? 14 and a half, 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah. Oh dear. What was that? Something doesn't sound quite right. It's come off the clutch real slow. Put it in second. Try a second. Could there be a spanner in the world? Coming from down here. Salvage expert Drew Pritchard is at Type 2 Detectives in Burwell, Cambridgeshire. Voila! And he's got his eye on this 1956 Volkswagen Beetle. Cool. It's just like Christmas for you, isn't it? It is. But during the test drive, there's a hitch. Oh, no. Let's try and get the synchro back. What's happened? So, basically, it's quite a common Volkswagen trait. Um, there's a splined drive shaft with a splined drum, and it, it really does look like the spline has been torn out of the drum. So, um, I suggest we phone the workshop, get them to bring out the parts we need. Will the breakdown deter Drew from his purchase? A cheap aftermarket part, not an original Volkswagen part, has failed. There's a lesson in that, so originality is king. Gonna put an original drum back on there now. Be good as gold. Part of the joy of owning an old VW is occasionally they go wrong. It's not Paul's fault, and I'm really glad this has happened here. Um, it's something we're gonna be able to fix, and this car will be utterly reliable, handle beautifully, and look incredibly classy when it's finished. We've got the right bit. And we should be out of trouble now. Oh, we're good. Love it. Love it. <laughs> That'll do. Cool. Ah. You've got some work to do, young man. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So, that was a different test drive. Yeah. What do you reckon? Um, I want it. It's very difficult for me to... <laughs> it's very difficult for me to say I don't want it, because okay. it, it needs bits doing, but nothing major. Um, so what sort of money are we looking at? Um, without that motor, it would be a, a 10 or 11 grand car all day long. Yeah. Um, I know what the guys put into the motor. I've had to fly out to Spain. I've had to transport it back from you. It's going to have to be 15 and a half firm, really. OK. Sold. Good. Thank, Thank you very much. There cool. you go. Right. You're happy now. now. I've, I, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Big tick. Now. Big tick. Drew quickly gets on the phone to Rebecca to share the news. Hello, Drew Pritchard. Um, you've just sent an email through of you standing next to a very black, shiny, rag-top oval. Yes. 
that's my latest car to the collection. I bought, uh, I bought it. You've bought it? You're not just standing next to somebody's car that you've spotted in a street? No. <laughs> Drew's done it. He's bought his dream car. Um, I'm really pleased for him, cos he's been banging on and on and on about this car for years. Um, all I can say is that I hope he's bought some other items that we can sell to pay for this car of his. And with that in mind, it's time for Drew to get back to his day job and see if there's any salvage to be had at the workshop. So, <laughs> where on earth have you got this lot from? We always go and find these Volkswagens in obscure places and um, normally hoarders of old Volkswagens and normally hoarders of old furniture and pedal cars and yep, radios I know. and I know. God knows what else, really. That sofa's unusual. Yeah. What's that? Is that, have you done that? Yeah, we trimmed that in our... What's that in called? Our, is that fat trim? biscuit? What we, call, called? what we call fat biscuit, fat yeah. Fat biscuit. They're like um, out of a science faculty, I believe, in um, Cambridge University. Oh! OK. Quite an odd thing. I think I know the maker of these. I the fair amount. There you go. Here. They're sort of, what I would say, not really worth anything now, but hang on to them. Mm -hmm. Because they will be. Yeah. Anything like that, particularly British, British bent ply from the late 50s, early 60s. It's on a bit of a march again now, with the real purists are really mm -hmm. into it. So yeah. the odd pieces that not many people have saved, like that, mm -hmm. will one yeah. day be worth something. You'll be able to go to Mrs. Yeah. Medhurst and say, see, I told you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably, yeah. I like saying that to her. No, nothing up here for me. Good. I've had all those items. I've had tens of thousands of items like that. Um, to be honest, it's really difficult to concentrate, so I'm just talking about and thinking about the Oval all the whole time I'm here. Um, today, it's all about the Beetle for me, and I finally got one, the one I wanted. And it's definitely not for sale at any price. But Drew won't be driving his car away just yet. There's a long list of alterations to be carried out. Can't wait to see this. No, so it's going to be a fun little project. Month or so? Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Paul. Really great to see really you Really look forward to it. See you later on. Cheers. Take see care. You soon. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Cheers, guys. See I'll see you on. very soon. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Best looking car here. Oh, that's mine. So, not that productive a day for the shop. No, no. Right, I've just got to figure out uh, how much I'm actually going to tell Rebecca how much I've paid for it, really. <laughs> did she know? We, we, did she think we were coming buying something else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went on the sort of preamble of saying, oh, well, he's got, he's got, you know, he's got loads of old Volkswagens, but he does have this room full of chairs and bits and uh, bobs right, that, you know, yeah. that well, might be of interest. That's he did going. have a room full of chairs. He did. He He's still he got a room full he of did. stuff. He does have. Before long, Drew is back on the road in search of more stock. This time with his friend and colleague from the antiques trade, Rob Black. And they're heading out east again, driving 300 miles across country from Conwy to Suffolk and the market town of Bungie, which sits on the banks of the River Waveney. Um, go off to see uh, Matthew and Gabriel Heim uh, of Matthew Heim Antiques. I'm uh, Gabriel, and this is my dad, Matthew, and we have an antique and bits and bobs uh, warehouse and workshop. Matthew started the business 30 years ago and frequently travels throughout Europe and Asia collecting rare items. His son, Gabriel, joined his dad about five years ago. Fun working with him. It's uh, entertaining and we get to have a good time. Yeah, <laughs> and we hardly ever argue. Hardly ever. Except when I'm late. When he's late and when he does something wrong, which is every so often. Not that I do anything with myself, but... Our business is mainly furniture, but we're interested in buying anything that is either peculiar or unsaleable. We specialise in the unsaleable, <laughs> and therefore we're hoping that Drew is going to come along 
and buy what has hitherto been unsaleable. So are we here? Is this it? I think so. It's a farm. A pig farm? A very big pig farm. Yep, this is the place. Mm. Hello. Hi, yeah. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, right, Gabriel. Drew. Hi, yeah. How are you? Matthew. Matthew. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, Hi Rob. Hi, Rob. Hi, yeah. Good. Matthew. Hi. Cool. Right. Well, this is clearly the place. It is. <laughs> you found us. All right, let's have a look around. Have you got all these barns here? Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah. where do we go? Through here? Through yeah. here. Yeah. All right, let's go around. Can we have a look? Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant workshop. Nice. I like it already in here. Great Good. Work. It's nice, isn't it? Good. Great shed. It's home for us. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's quite a decent looking type actually, isn't it? Yes, last week in, or ten days ago in France. Yeah, these not, two. Not a bad one. Not a bad one at all. Quite like the look of that one. Okay, so where do we go through to the, the sort of warehouse bit? Just warehouse keep going through, through that through way. There. Oh yes, fantastic. Brilliant. <laughs> Why haven't I been here before? I don't know. <laughs> Why haven't you been here before? I don't know. <laughs> Can't find it's it. great. And we tied it up for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Dustin. You shouldn't have bothered, really. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the best collection of furniture. That's, that's coming along nicely, that. Yeah, it is, yeah. yes. We've got Working one of those progress. as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you have, yes. So are you um, open to the public or is it just trade? Well, we have public in here. And I'm happy to take money from anybody. Anybody, yeah, same as me. Okay. Yeah, it's a sort of different aesthetic, isn't it? Like that painted finish on that. That's just bizarre. I've yeah. seen stuff like that in Norway. And France. And France. That's French. I'd never say that was French. I know. Different look. I really like this place. This is good. It feels good because they're, they're out of the way, to say the least, and they've just got quantity and it's untidy and they've been here a long time and he buys what he likes, which is a really good thing. That means there's all manner of different periods mixed together and styles from Romanian to Biedermeyer to Chinese to Art Deco. It's all sorts of stuff. Very, very good. I just feel... I haven't seen anything yet, but... It'll, it'll pop out, I'm sure. I was just having a sift around in here. You're right, yes. I'm always looking for good upholstered furniture, and there's a huge difference um, in just an upholstered chair and a good upholstered chair. But that is a good chair. That's the original there. This has been gone over. Yep. Put that over, that's the original there. It's an incredibly original chair. They've redone the seat, but they've left all the padding in it. You just want to sit in it, though, don't you? Yeah. I mean, it's just... That's lovely. Great look, great model. It's a barrel back, uh, late 19th century, um, upholstered armchair um, of sort of diminutive size, but good scale, very good form, sits well, legs are good, all original casters, very, very nice. What, what about this thing? Uh, I can't sell that. I'm sorry, this... Really? This, yeah. It was my mother's chair, and my brothers and I are uh, not decided not to what? sell it for the moment. OK. That's a shame, that's right up. My alley. Right. Wow. Okay. Very well, if we so. if we make a decision about it, um, I'd be very keen to buy that. Yeah. Place. Okay. I'll come back to you. I would. Yeah. I would really. But it's always difficult, that isn't it? I've had other ones and sold them. It's just that one is seems to be confused by um, sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot in this business. It's uh, you are dealing with people's memories in some way of the furniture and the people who use them. I'll tell you what I did like the look of when I walked past, which was this marble washstand yes. without a bowl in. Where's that from? Is that Euro Eastern European as well? Yeah. That one's actually from uh, Budapest. Budapest. Quite like the look of that. Oh, 
to move it too much. No, it needs, it needs a bit of tightening up, doesn't it? This French marble-topped washstand with bronze legs was made in the 1920s. It could be sold as a designer piece and used in a bathroom of a smart hotel for towels and toiletries. With cleaning and polishing, it's worth around £600. What, what are you asking for that? 220. Oh, 230. 230. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, a couple hundred quid, Mike. Or is that two? Are you on the money? It's close. Okay, well, look, but... 230, we'll have it. Okay, thank you. That's great, thank you. Mm. Not going to mess about with that. It's just got a good look, hasn't it? Yeah. He's given me proper trade price straight away. Makes life a lot easier. We can just crack on through the day. So, anything more like that? You can see one there? Yes, there's just one there. They're usually a pair, aren't they? I know. But I think the other one has gone. The weird I thing think is... that's got a drawer in it. Yeah. The weird thing is, I had a pair of these within the last year. Oh, really? Exactly the same. Identical. Really strange. Yeah, oh, similar to Exactly one. the same. Yeah. Right. Exactly the same. I had casters on the other one. This one might be cheaper. <laughs> it was. It will be, I'm sure. I think, I think it's missing too many bits. Yeah. Well, this is what it's missing. Yeah. Which I can, I, I can do it, you know, we can put yeah. that on, but it's just... The second marble washstand we saw, um, I had a pair which were in mint condition, perfect. But that one is one of a pair and sort of far from uh, complete. We couldn't, uh, time-wise, put any money into that one. That's a shame. Because it's good looking. It's very now. It's just right for now. I was always told if it's got three faults, walk away. Never cool. Did. Nobody ever told me that. Yeah, I was also <laughs> There's something ago. else I've learned. Um, poking around because there's so much stuff here. You've got to sort of look, look again, and then actually look again because there's so much and there's sort of layers, which I really like. Um, and I spotted a button back chair. But what really sort of gets me with it was the angle of the back. What's that? Cartoon? No, it's a big... Oh, the lounger. ..knackered-looking lounge chair. Uh, it's sold. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not having much luck. That's one of a pair. You, you've got, got the other one? Pair, yeah. But it's, uh, Looks like I just it's been checked out. up, it's sold. Definitely. I just phoned. I know who made it when it was made what it's worth, what to do with it, how desirable it is, what a great chair, da 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 So to hear it sold, and there was another one, is a massive disappointment. OK, so this is where the good kit is. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, the good kit. Pretty much. What is there? This thing. What about that little, uh... The chair? Yeah. Sound. Nice, isn't it? It's very nice. Lovely yeah. stud work. Yeah. This unusual X frame studded chair with original ironwork would have been made in the 1880s. With new upholstery and minor repair, it could fetch around £600. It's just got that something else. I don't know what it is, but that's got it. What, what are you asking for that? £250. Fifties a bit steep. Drew Pritchard is near Bungie in Suffolk, visiting an antique shop run by father and son Matthew and Gabriel Hyam. This thing. What about that little? Uh... Young Gabriel has set the price on a leather-studded chair, but is it too high for Drew? Fifties a bit steep. Two, two, five. Ooh, we're going in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> I want to pay two hundred quid for it. Do you want to meet in the middle? Two ten. Two fifteen. Two fifteen sold. Thank you. Now we'll have that. That's good. We finish at two fifteen. That's fine. Bush bought me an extra bag of chips each. That's fine. Um, it's mine now, and that's the important bit. And I've got the skills and the guys to put that back together again in a way that you'll never be able to tell. It's been touched. A very charming little piece of furniture. 
Um, this is interesting. Tell me more about that little model. Is it cork? It is cork, yeah. It's supposed to be somewhere in the Thames Valley, but I haven't researched it. A rare find. This model castle is made entirely of cork and was built in the late 18th century, possibly by the owner of the house. It sits in a very elegant late 19th century case. With minor restoration, it could sell for around £2,000. That's just for lifting it. There's another really? handle the other side. The cork model inside is naive, but put it together with the case, and you've got a museum quality piece. It comes off. Yeah, OK. But I'll take the stuff off. The is it, what, what's it worth? It's worth 650. I tell you what, I like the case a lot. Mm. But what I'd like to do is to find the house and sell it back to the owner of the house for, now. For with another zero on the end. That's the thing. Exactly. Yes. I'm tempted by that. I don't know. I God. Would five hundred quid buy it? Um. I think that five fifty. I'll give you the case as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning. He's giving, yeah. <laughs> you're going you're to be, you're gonna be <laughs> fine. <laughs> Just hurry up and keep me in the way I wish to be kept. Yeah. Okay, it's got the handle on the other end. Yeah. It has, yeah. So it's all no no questions, no no problems. And there's no problems as far as I know, other than some of the chimneys are down, but they're there. Okay. Lying in the valleys. Yeah. Sold. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Very nice thing. I'm glad you... I'll just take uh, it round to them now. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm allergic to work. Yeah. OK, yep. let's get cool. it up. OK. Today, buying-wise, excellent. I managed to buy a very saleable, very commercial piece in the wash stand. That's fine, Joe. You just stand there. So I'm just, yeah, managing. Yeah, I can see. Bought a chair, which is extremely fashionable and cool, and it's also got some historical merit. And then the sort of uh, the best piece of the day for me was the little cork architectural model in that splendid case. Real good dealer item, collector item, fair item. You know, it's a good piece. Very happy with that. Yeah, it's been really good. It's been fun and uh, interesting seeing what Drew thinks of the place. And, yeah, he's bought some pieces as well, which has been really nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. I enjoyed Thanks, that. Drew. That, that was, was good. Nice, nice stuff. stuff. I enjoyed it. Good well. gear. Good gear. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. See you again. Oh, yeah, see you later. Take care. See Thank you. Good call. Cool. Was wasn't it? Did you enjoy that? Very much so. Got a couple of belters in there. Yeah. The uh, marble washstand, just a good little trade. That, I've, I've got sort of the clients for that, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it on spec. That is so chic. I mean, it's such a lovely thing. It is, isn't it? I love Very the square simple. patch on the splashback. Very nice. Right. Well, that was a good one. So, um, I think back to the shop, actually, now, with that lot. Back at base, Drew is eager to show Rebecca and the team what he's turned up. This was first purchased from him. Simple. No bowl. Oh, an old washstand. Yes, yeah, but it's a nice, elegant nice. one. It is. The marble washstand, now, that is very special. Very, very classy. Really pleased Drew spotted that. This was the other thing. English, late 19th, early 20th, oak. Yes, I adore that. Isn't that lovely? It's, it is. it's almost sculpt. That late 19th century chair, as soon as Drew turned it sidewards, I mean, it was stunning. You don't want to sit in it, you just want to look at it. Love that. But this is 
with a little gem, to be honest. This is a, I'll just stick on the side there, Ugh. cork architects or builders or house model. Cork? It's all carved wow. cork. It's beautiful little drop handles of real good quality. R originally ebonized from you as well, not just painted. See the lip there, that's proper ebonizing. Yeah. But it's nice because the top lifts up, don't it? <laughs> it's a work of art, isn't it? Obviously. If there's any cork missing, I'm quite prepared to open some wine. <laughs> I am. So where can we get some cork? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. <laughs> A few days later, Drew meets with Craig, the upholsterer, to discuss the repairs to the leather-studded chair. What we do with this is put this, this leather behind here mm. and bring up what we can of these ones to, to cover the bulk of it. A lot of this leather on here has gone tissue thin, so it's, uh, it's going to be difficult to work with anyway. And the other option is just replacing the whole thing? The other option is replace the whole back seat and the outside back. Don't want to do that. I'd rather see it as an old repair. Yeah. I really would. I think it would be much more attractive. Patch it. Yeah. And as usual, need it yesterday. Uh, yeah, just for yeah. the change, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not busy, are you? No, not at all, no. <laughs> no, I keep spaces open for you. <laughs> the team starts on the other restorations. Gavin cleans the court castle. Hilary takes photos of the washstand. And Craig begins work on the chair. So we'll cut this out. And that's going to be our, our patch for repairing this. Let me skewer. The new leather is tucked under the original leather. It's like a surgical procedure once we get into doing this. So we need to get some of the glue out. And carefully glued into place. It's like a little jigsaw, just see where all these pieces join together. You can see where they go. So there's as little of my leather showing as possible. And we've now got that all back together there now. So we'll wait for that glue to dry there. Once the glue's dry, we can pull this over and secure it on here. Before long, the chair is ready for Drew to inspect. I think it's really excellent, actually. I think he's done a lovely job. The repair there, that is superb. That is one elegant looking chair. I mean, look at the side profile of that. Look at that. It's super. Now it's got another 100 years left in it. That'll go within 24 hours. Excellent.